At this moment, search and rescue efforts are underway in Taiwan from the most powerful earthquake the island has seen in 25 years. As you can see, the mm. damage there is severe. Several buildings tilted to the side, many collapsed. Yeah, at least nine people are already confirmed to be dead. The tremors injured hundreds more. The 7.4 magnitude quake hit during the morning rush hour on the eastern part of the island. Dozens remain trapped in buildings and quarries as a result of the damage. CBS News foreign correspondent MTS Tayab joins us now from London with the latest on this. MTS, those uh, images are quite shocking. This, this could have been much worse considering the magnitude of the quake. But how are the crews navigating these unstable structures and surfaces as they try to rescue people potentially trapped? Well, Errol, Lana, as you so correctly point out, rescue efforts remain underway following the earthquake that was so powerful, some buildings tipped onto their sides. In fact, in the eastern coastal Hualien City, the epicenter of the cake, quake, rather, rescue workers had to use cranes to free people stuck inside damaged buildings. Now, while the island nation of Taiwan may be geographically small, it is home to over 23 million people. And Hualien sits in this sort of mountainous area area in the east. And while it's relatively sparsely populated, uh, it has been largely cut off for most of its history. But in recent years, Taiwan has been investing heavily in there. Uh, but because of this high mountainous terrain and its obvious beauty, there are people there. We understand that at least three hikers on a trail were killed and around 50 workers on their way to a nearby hotel in a convoy of minibuses are now trapped following that earthquake, which again, as you point pointed out, struck at around 7.58 local time and which has so far set off at least nine aftershocks with a magnitude of four or larger. Guys. MTS, I'm, I'm struck seeing these images of the buildings tilted so far on their side. Uh, Taiwan has been hit by devastating earthquakes before. Were there particular preparations in place this time around? Are, are those buildings tilted but not destroyed as a result of, of anything that that was part of a preparation in advance? Yeah, very good observation. Look, Taiwan is no stranger to powerful earthquakes, and yet their toll on the nation has been relatively contained, and that's thanks to its frankly, excellent earthquake preparedness. Uh, Taiwan uh, lies along the Pacific so-called Ring of Fire. Now, this is a line of seismic faults encircling the Pacific Ocean where most of the world's earthquakes occur. And so because of that, the Taiwanese government has continually revised the level of earthquake resistance required for new and existing buildings. It also offers subsidies to residents who are willing to check their building's sort of earthquake resistance distance and preparedness. Taiwan also pushes earthquake drills at workplaces and at schools while the media sends messages and through the cell phone about earthquake safety, all of which seems to have helped limit the damage and casualties following this very powerful earthquake. And M. Charles, before we let you go, we understand dozens may be trapped in highway tunnels right now. What more do we know about efforts to retrieve them? Yeah, guys, very quickly, we understand that tremors set off at least nine landslides and debris collapsed hillsides into what's known as the Suha Highway in that Hualien area, which runs again down the East Coast. Now, according to Taiwan's National Fire Agency, many people are trapped in road tunnels along the Suha Highway, which is considered one of the most dangerous roads in Taiwan. We understand that at least 50 miners are also trapped in a mine. We also hear that rescue teams are working to get those who are trapped in those tunnels out. Now, again, this is the strongest earthquake that Taiwan has seen in 25 years. It also set off tsunami warnings on the island and across neighboring countries. Those have now been called off. But as we've been saying, a lot of people remain trapped in tunnels, in mines and elsewhere. And we also understand that large parts of the country are still without power. All Thanks. right. MTS, thank you hearing from people in the U.S. who have family impacted by the earthquake. That's right, in Taiwan. Uh, CBS News Los Angeles' Kara Finstrom is in Monterey Park, California, with more on that. One of the locals we spoke with is a Taiwanese reporter who's living in the U.S. right now. She happened to be on the phone with her mother when the quake hit.
My mom was so scared. My mom was even crying. And then uh, I told her to hide under the table. My sister actually lived uh, right over there. She was like talking to me just now. And then she was saying that even the highway over there crashed. And she was so shocked. And uh, her kid was in shock too. Chang shared videos that her family took there and those and other images continuing to come and show damage for blocks, structures crumbling and buildings leaning so far over it seems they're going to soon fall. Monterey Park is considered the cultural capital of Taiwanese America, so many locals here and throughout the San Gabriel Valley are watching all of these videos coming in hoping to see images of the neighborhoods they know. Many of these folks have been having trouble getting in touch with loved ones because of those jammed cell signals. Uh, and I can tell you as well that we just spoke this morning with a man who owns a restaurant here. One of his good friends says he will be coming to the U.S. to stay for a while. He is safe but was so shaken up by all of this, he's worried about aftershocks and the potential for tsunamis. Back to you. I bet. Kara Finstrom, thank you.